This section of Yojana focuses on fintech policies. Uh, now, some of the policies which have been discussed. So, one, the first one was Gati Shakti program. So, what are the seven engines that's important? Railroad, airport, uh, port, mass transport, waterways, and logistics. And the focus is on developing renewable sector, optic fibers, petroleum sector, Sagarmala connectivity for the port areas, expressways for the highways, decongestion of the railways, and empowering the power transmission systems. Under fintech, what kind of developments we need to focus on? So the first thing is we are focusing on presenceless, cashless uh, system. So ATM is one example, automated teller, uh, teller machines. Then we have fast tech systems, touchless transactions, jam trinity, which is Jandan, Aadhaar and mobile, e rupee, which is the digital uh, format, direct benefit transfer, getting the benefits directly into bank account. PM Savnidhi, which is access to credit for small vendors, also using technologies like blockchain, geofencing and geotagging under digital revolution 4.0 would be the future aspects of it. The four pillars of fintech are income, investment, insurance and institutional credit. Then under India stack, we talk about enabling the private sector innovations. There are four pronged strategies for the same. The first is biometric identification with Aadhaar, Jandhan uh, Yojana, which talks about financial inclusion. IMPS, UPI uh, system, Bharat Bill payment systems, accessing the uh, providing access to UPI, GSTN and DigiLocker. India has nearly 2,100 fintech companies and is third after US and China. 17 fintechs are unicorn, that means they have a valuation with uh, over 1 billion. Then we are talking that uh, the India's fintech market has huge potentials. At present, it's 50 to 60 billion dollars, which is expected to grow up to 150 billion dollars by in the next five years. Uh, DPI, which is the digital public infrastructure, talks about inclusive system with better security and privacy uh, focus. For vaccination, we recently had the COVID app. Similarly, the open network for digital commerce is another uh, platform. Uh, the program FinTech Beyond Boundaries was launched by F Infinity Forum and uh, it had participation from South Africa, UK and Indonesia. Three aspects were covered. FinTech Beyond Boundaries, that is expanding it geographically. Beyond Next, which focuses on quantum computing and Beyond Finance, that means in the sections of Space Tech, Agri Tech and Green Tech. Also, Idea Global Stack was introduced under the Bali Fintech Agenda of IMF in 2018. Aadhaar now wants to move a step forward and under Aadhaar 2.0, it's under an international identity standard, a international digital identity standard as it would be. So far, worldwide, 1.7 billion population does not have access to financial services. But within India, we have seen that 76% of the population has done one or other forms of non-traditional financial transaction in some way. The next is Jaljeevan Mission, uh, providing piped water supply to households by 2024. Uh, in 2020, 100% uh, coverage by Goa was done. In 2021, Telangana, Daman Deev, Dadar Nagar Haveli, Puducherry, and, uh, and, Andaman and Nicobar and Haryana have been covered. 2022 targets are for the following uh, states which are Bihar, Gujarat, Himachal, Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Punjab, Sikkim and Uttarakhand. And then we have targets for the 9 other and 8 other states in 23 and 24. So, tapped water connection would be provided to rural households and public institutions. Uh, the assured supply is 55 liters per day per person. And India, as of now, has numerous groundwater uh, consumption. We are saying that every 10 kilometers, there is one abstraction system which uh, pulls the groundwater. The projected water demand would be twice the availability by 2030. So definitely we need to strengthen our mechanisms. So every village would be taking their own water secure system. A five year village action plan would be developed and there would be four key components. The first is to strengthen the local uh, water sources in village water uh, supply infrastructure to be developed, grey water collection areas and treatment and reuse and regular operation and maintenance of water system. So Jal Jeevan Mission is a decentralized, demand driven, community managed program. 5% of the cost would be covered in cash or kind by the communities in northeast and hilly areas. In other villages it would be 10%.
the implementation would require speed and scale that's what the focus is there would be various field test kits to test the quality of the water supply and also national center for drinking water and sanitation and quality has been established in kolkata and it works on a hub and spoke model uh, the technology has been developed and technology uh, for development and checking the technology a committee under principal scientific advisor to government of india is established so far of the total fresh water 85% goes for agriculture 10% for industries and only 5% for drinking and domestic use we are focusing on the districts which are water stressed which are 256 of the 734 districts and how to actually provide safer water uh, supply to these areas the next is digital identity now Aadhaar payment bridge has been developed by in, uh, the national corporation for payment uh, systems and dbt and cash transfers happen to through this the benefit of kyc uh, benefit of Aadhaar is it works as a kyc know your customer electronic kyc can be done you need not to carry documentation and it can be a single source of authentication so a suite of open apis for example qr codes upi bharat bill payment systems beam application all of these can retrieve data through eKYC and that works through Aadhaar enabled payment systems and BBPS which is Bharat Bill payment systems. Uh, we have made the services presenceless, paperless, cashless and consent based. So uh, micro ATMs with Aadhaar have been established. Uh, then under the fintech revolution we are talking about how the transactions have changed. With the fast tag nearly one 92 million transactions have happened. Umang gap nearly 1.7 billion transactions have happened. By 2025, we expect 26 lakh new jobs under fintech sector with uh, value of 2.88 crores and digital payments to increase by nearly 160 times. So India is changing the track and we are changing the share of global market sourcing with 5.1 million industrial workforce and 36% of that is female. Prior to 2010, we were in the phase of digital revolution one. RTGS when released, there was just 100 transactions in 2003 and now we can move on to billions of transactions that makes a significant difference. Between 2010 to 2016, it was digital payments 2.0 where 3G, 4G connections were developed, innovations in banking, financial services and insurance was done. After 2016 demonetization we have digital revolution 3.2 where percent to merchant transactions have been focused by 2025 nearly 95 percent of the financial inclusion across all user segment would be done and it's believed that there would be five times more growth in e-commerce which would add nearly 25 lakh crores to gdp uh, the future says digital revolution 4.0 with blockchain geotag and geofencing technology india and singapore are now working on uniting upi systems and pay now systems for low cost transactions artificial intelligence has been brought in financial sector as we said the digital transactions have incre increased tenfold in last two years now there are issues related to frauds identity theft any other crisis so how do we address those through artificial intelligence we can see if there are repeat transactions uh, if what is the possibility that a person requires a loan who actually needs the loan loan what is the right segment so 65 60 percent of all the transactions occur through upi 250 banks partner to it uh, OTP is one of the ways through verification. SMS is another way, but we also see fraudulent SMS where bank information is stolen uh, and then bank details are being accessed. So in order to check those, developing artificial intelligence for fintech sector, sector is again important. It's believed that the situation would change by 2026 and 44% of the total financial transactions would come through payment gateway, 34% through QR code and 22% through the point of sale machines which are the handheld machines we are also now into a time where new concepts have come up which is buy now pay later for smaller items with negligible interest rates so data prediction predictive analysis is the way where artificial intelligence can be used and this could actually make the financial sector much more fast paced create new opportunities help us interact better with customers relate things better to the background and bring in cyber security uh, we have seen that various companies have lost nearly 52 billion dollars through online fraud 
thoughts and there is where AI can play a significant role. Uh, coming on to the rural banking, we have seen 28% of the transactions through UPI, which was significantly less than the urban area. Uh, June 2021, nearly 13,000 terabytes of data consumption was seen in India, which was one of the highest record uh, consumptions worldwide. And therefore, we have seen that fintech or financial sector has a great uh, opportunities. Digital sector has a great opportunity. Then uh, in the banking sector, Digital Empowerment Foundation is working with banking correspondents who are known as socialpreneurs, which are uh, information entrepreneurs. What is the benefit of going cashless? Now with going cashless through UPI transactions, uh, bank transactions, you have 24-7 money, the budget becomes easier, there is no cash, so no theft. Uh, it saves time, distance and uh, money. You can universalize your finance and enable business and entrepreneurs to actually work more but for the time being we are moving on a digital strategy that is creating a balance between physical and digital transactions specifically for those who are not well versed with digital transactions and digital literacy then is development of infrastructure Healthcare spendings have increased from 19 to 33%. We have enabled 5G technology, AI, drones, semiconductors, geospatial systems, pharma, genomics, and clean mobility are some of the sectors. Under PM Awas, 80 lakh houses have been built. Gati Shakti program, transit oriented development, Amrit scheme, drone Shakti, which is drone as a service, uh, creating virtual labs for science and maths, skill e labs, dig uh, digital university as a new concept in this budget, gift city. Uh, closer to Gandhi Nagar, the capital of Gujarat, Desh Stack, the e-portal, one class, one channel by e-vidya uh, program, national digital health ecosystem, telemental health program by Nimhans Bangalore and IITM Bangalore. So all those are uh, uh, triple IT Bangalore are some of the pro uh, programs which have been actually beneficial. When it comes to education, we have seen that the gross enrollment ratio for class 6 to 8 was 90%, but for 11th and 12th, it was just 56%. So out of school children are significantly high. And in 2017-18, 3.2 crores children were out of school. We now aim to focus on 100% enrollment in preschool to secondary by 2020, 2030. Uh, now various experiences which are part of national education policy are experiential learning, hands-on learning, arts and sports integrated learning, storytelling based pedagogy, uh, PARAC which is performance assessment review analysis uh, of knowledge for holistic development aims to br bring in a standard setting under MHRD which has been proposed in the new education policy, improving the support system for children with disability, uh, creating academic cl uh, clubs, developing NDR, National Digital Education uh, Architecture. And under the eVidya channel, we are talking about expanding from 12 to 200 TV channels and class 1 to 12. Now, some of the related schemes are Aspire, which focuses on uh, accelerating state education. Uh, then we have new literacy programs, the Pradhan Mantri Poshan Shakti Abhiyan, the Poshan Mission, the Poshan 2.0, uh, the Pradhan Mantri Innovation Learning Program, which is called as Dhruv, uh, Samrakri Shiksha, which includes the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan and teachers training together under one head and STARS, which is strengthening teacher learning and result uh, for the states have been released. The next is India at 100. So uh, under the Gati Shakti program, we are aiming at building national highways, which are more than 25,000 uh, kilometers long, multimodal parks under PPP model, coverage using the indigenous world-class technology, uh, Vande Bharat trains to be released, Gati Shakti cargo terminals to be built, ropeways to be built, dwellings to be built, tourism sites, constructions for BPL, uh, providing clean water, increasing the defense budget for domestic industries, defense R&D budget to be increased, and generation of 60 lakh jobs for academic and uh, related sectors have been important. Productivity linked scheme in 14 sectors have been started. And then there was a research paper, the theory of money, wealth and efficient currency markets modeling M5 as money supply with cryptocurrency in the finance of India. So M5 as money supply with uh, the CBDC uh, works 
along with the development of uh, the positive contributions to the GDP and increasing the efficiency generating wealth. So those are some of the things that have been taken into account. Now under the space sector, we are talking about aerotaxis, drones, UAVs, uh, uh, un unmanned flying aerial vehicles, space debris, surveillance equipments. Uh, ATL Space Challenge was launched in September 2021 with collaboration of ATL, ISRO and CBSC. The idea was to explore, research, leverage and inhabit uh, space. Uh, ENIC Arise program with ISRO was released to focus on geospatial information and uh, augmented and virtual reality techniques. Digital currency. Now, what is fiat money? Fiat money is a money which is not backed by gold or silver, but is declared by the government as an enforceable legal tender. So there are numerous cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but those are not authentic authenticated and there are no financial intermediaries like bank with those. So cryptocurrencies, which are the new digital uh, form have not been given a proper shape. So there has been a committee for international financial reporting standards, which pointed out that cryptocurrencies cannot be treated as financial assets in cash or equity instruments. And therefore, uh, most of the countries have refrained from using cryptocurrency. However, the central bank digital currency is to be released in 22-23 and this is after the amendment, amendment in the RBI Act 1934 which allows us to uh, release the central bank digital currency. There are 9 digital currencies in the world and 55, 56 under research. In Jamaica 2022, we had the sovereign digital currency which has started. In Eastern Caribbean, it was Gcash. So this currency would be a digital token and not the same as cryptocurrency. It would be issued by the central bank that is the RBI in India. And the value would be as the fiat currency. So government mandate would be required rather than the cryptocurrency. So it's basically a token based uh, uh, central bank digital currency where uh, we can pay with it as the payment in cash. So uh, there have been variants of this. It could be account based or it could be token based or wholesale based. So account based, you can basically transfer the money between the account holders. Token based where digital uh, cash could be used and wholesale for uh, wholesale settlements like inter um, bank payments or cross border payments that could be used. So what is the benefit? Uh, cryptocurrencies are not recognized. They are volatile and subject to risk. There is no issuing authority and therefore less trusted. Uh, there is pseudo anonymity that exists and there is limited scale and there are various range of currencies in the market. To avoid all these, this central bank digital currency would be a superset on all of those and it would be much more environmentally sustainable. It would reduce the cost for the corporates specifically dealing with cross-border uh, trade. So those people people would actually benefit a lot and this technology would focus on validation distribution and pseudo anonymity so those would be the key highlights among this section that we have discussed this central bank digital currency is exceptionally important highly probable question for your upcoming upsc examination so cover this topic in detail what is fiat money what is legal tender what is CBDC, how it is different from a crypt cryptocurrency and what are the benefits of CBDC, the three types which is token based or retail based, account based and uh, wholesale based and why central bank which is issuing it has a greater stand in com contrast to any other cryptocurrency which exists in the market. So those were some of the top highlights that we have covered for this edition. We will be covering Yojana and Kurukshetra on a regular basis. So stay tuned for further updates from our side. Have a wonderful day ahead.